Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your girl D of Life with D, and we are back with another video. So, as I have been sharing with you guys on Instagram a little bit more about my life and what it is that I do, as well as here actually, I've been getting a lot more questions about how it is that I am able to do what I do and the steps that I took to become licensed. So I'm here to share with you guys my process and my journey in getting licensed and also hopefully help you out along the way. So first things first, why should you get licensed? Why would you want to get licensed? Well, once you're licensed, that means that you can ethically and legally practice as a counselor within whichever state you get licensed in. And so it means that you'll be able to go ahead and work for a private practice, a community health agency, a ton of different options will really be open to you at that point after you become licensed. So it's really worth it to become licensed. Also legally, you cannot practice if you are not licensed. So really you must become licensed in order to practice. One thing that is important to know about being licensed though is that when you are licensed, that does not mean you can practice in all 50 states. You are typically only able to practice in the state that you become licensed in. There are other laws and everything that kind of apply to this specifically as far as how different licenses carry over. But as that is not my kind of field of study, I am not going to speak on that because I do not want to direct you wrong. However, you can always contact your state board of health and ask them how licensing works in their specific state. Now let's get into how I was able to become licensed. So first things first, after graduating from my undergraduate program, I enrolled in a master's program in order to become a clinical mental health counselor. I made sure to enroll in a program that was KCREP accredited so that way I would be able to take some of my licensing exams a little bit earlier while I was still in school because my program accreditation would offer that opportunity to me. I have more information about why I chose the school that I chose and the program that I chose in another video so I will leave it up above as well as linked down below so you guys can check out that video as well if you have not already. So because I went to a school in a state where I was going to become licensed, I did not have to worry about making sure if all the courses that I was going to take would actually count towards this degree as far as what the state requirements are. But if you are looking to do a program in a different state than you are actually going to get licensed in, please make sure to make sure that the program requirements as well as your state requirements match up. And if they do not, make sure you know you take those extra courses while you're in school in order to be able to get licensed once you graduate. Because if you graduate without having taken them, the board will still make you take them at a cost out of pocket to you. So as I mentioned in that video, I did go to grad school part-time, which means that it took me three years to finish my program. So the first two years, I primarily focused on my coursework. And then in the last year and a half, I did a practicum as well as an internship. And a practicum was very, very similar to internship. The only difference is that there's more hours at my internship based on my school's breakdown of what practicum and internship look like. So what did I do in that last year? Since like I said, the first two years were really just focused on me completing my program requirements. Um, the last year was focused on that as well, but I did have to start really getting ready to become licensed and taking the steps to do so. So I will be looking over here from time to time just to make sure that I am actually telling you guys the correct information. So in my last year of school I did a couple of different things to really prepare me for graduating and taking licensing exams. So the first thing that I started to do was to study for and then take the National Counselor Examination, which is abbreviated to the NCE. So I took a couple months to study and make sure I had the concepts down and really understood the different frameworks and core areas of counseling. And then I registered to take that test and ended up taking the test and passing the exam on the first time. So I took the NCE in December and then after that it was pretty much me coasting for a couple of months before I really started to get on the ball as far as other things that needed to be done in order for me to apply for a licensure. So in April, my professor at the time really started getting on me and my classmates about making sure that we filled out our LGPC, which is short for Licensed Graduate Professional Counselor application with plenty of time to you know be able to make sure that we had all the documents that we needed in order to submit them at that time. So in April, I began to pull those documents together. And so some of those documents include my grades with course descriptions because each course needed to have its description taken directly from the course manual. 
I also had to turn in my practicum and internship hours, which I had been keeping track of in an Excel log for the entire course of my program. So I was able to easily find and then calculate these numbers. My national counselor examination scores, I had to send those in as well, which was the exam that I took in December. And then I also had to take a law test. And so I waited until May to take the law test because it is a rather short exam, kind of in the realm of things it took I want to say about 30 minutes for me to be able to read all the information and answer it. They give you all the information for the law test at that time, so it's nothing that you have to study for before going in to take the exam, and also it is offered online, so it will just keep giving you those same questions until you get the answers correct, so it's really a low-pressure kind of exam, but you do have to be able to send in your scores by the time that you send in your application for LGPC. And then the last thing that I did was go get a background check and go get fingerprinted as well. And so this took a little kind of bit of calling around, especially in the height of COVID and trying to find places that were open to do background checks and fingerprinting and things of that nature. But it was something that had to be submitted for my application. So like I said, I started getting that packet together in April. And then by the time that I graduated in May, it was ready to be shipped out literally the day that I graduated. And that is definitely the goal because you do have to wait for your transcript to be in before you're able to send it out. And so by the time that graduation rolls around, kind of the goal would be to be able to send out the application um, and send those transcripts as well. And also because people primarily graduate in May as opposed to December, it's a lot of graduates trying to get in and get licensed as well. So it's not just you and your school and your class. No, no, no. It's thousands of people who are trying to get licensed at the same time as you. So I really found that it was helpful for me to be like very prompt about that. And I was able to get a really quick response time, I think in part because I was able to submit my application so quickly. So after I submitted my application for becoming an LGPC, I started looking for jobs. Looking for jobs is a little bit hard when you do not technically have your LGPC status yet, but I did try to, you know, get ahead of it and let people know, hey, I passed my NCE. I have my background check and I'm just waiting to hear back at this point. Employees were kind of hit or miss with being understanding of that. And I felt like I was really able to be lucky and find a job during this time because I know that that's not necessarily everybody's experience. So after about four to six weeks of submitting your LGPC application, you should hear back from your board. Mine came in the form of an email regarding whether or not they accepted your application and therefore allowed you to be licensed. And then from there, you can officially call yourself an LGPC or whatever the term may be in your prospective state because it is not an LGPC everywhere. And it also matters what your field is as well. For example, social workers have a completely different acronym system for denoting their roles and their positions. So let's say you hear back from your LGPC application and you got approved, yay. And then you also were able to get a job, super yay. The next thing that you need to do is go and get insurance. So you need to have malpractice insurance and most shops require you to have it anyway. Sometimes they offer suggestions about who you should go through and typically have requirements about how much malpractice insurance you need to have as well. Like I said, almost every job will require this, but you just wanna make sure that you have the correct amount for your job. And friends, that is the process to get licensed to become a clinical mental health counselor. That was what my process was like, and I hope that it was able to provide kind of a guideline or a basis for you guys when moving forward. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please take the time to like this video if you enjoyed it or learned anything. Comment any questions down below that I may not have answered and I will definitely make sure to answer them or provide another video if it is something that requires a more in-depth kind of response. And then subscribe if you have not already. Like I said, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and were able to learn something from it. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Bye!